Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new episode of Gifted Since 92. Giving you guys the latest and exclusive content on new music, entertainment news, and inspirational quotes by me, the Queen. Today is a special topic for today. I wanted to talk about this and get this off my chest. And this is going to be another rant. So I know my followers and subscribers, they all they always love to look forward for me to be keeping posted with new content talk about things in general life etc but um, we're going to leave with this quote of the today and this is going to be the jump start to a kickstart start of my um, own opinions on good music and why we don't hear enough of good music today so here we go sit back relax and enjoy this episode so the quote under the influence of good music now this quote is really interesting i love this quote because really overall when music is good and it has substance and the quality and the content and messages have a positive message a meaning from a lyric um the song itself the production how an artist is able to carry out his or her own experiences and bring it to life. I've always have said that in my videos I've said music that makes you feel, music that makes you feel alive, that makes you feel like you can do anything and achieve anything, that if you're feeling down and you listen to a song it will uplift your spirits. And to be honest, like I said, we still hear good music nowadays but it's not enough in my opinion and you know why today's music let's just talk about today's music now today's music it's okay I'll be blunt um it's not my cup of tea there's some good artists here and there but overall I think the music climate right now is bland what I mean by bland I don't really hear enough different instrumentations or a variety of topics or just an overall like nostalgia appeal and I feel like you know who really inspired me to do this video too shout out to Tony because he's an Aaliyah fan and you already know we love Aaliyah we hold it down for Aaliyah because we're Aaliyah fans and he did a video a couple of days ago um it titles what happened to R&B so I checked out his video and he made some key and good valid points um today's music it's just not exciting as it was before even when we look back to different and previous generations we're in what the year is 2019 right now this new era of music is more hip-hop but it, but today's hip-hop has more of like that trap vibe it has more of like that trapish um you know r and ish vibe and then we got the pop music it's more like a poppy alternative more um kind of like a combination of like a little bit of r&b here and there and then like i said you know we still got country 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 music is always going to be here but i listen to country music sometimes i don't listen to it as much but i like country music so um i like rock music i do like heavy metal music um so i like jazz music I like uh what's the other kind of music electronica music I like disco music and really today's music climate okay let's get into the hip-hop I just feel like hip-hop music has went downhill and the thing is the production and artists that some of them like I said they even have said it from their own mouths they said it well I'm here for the money I'm not really here for moving the culture. I'm not really here for like making people feel good. I don't have a passion for it, so I'm here for the money. I'm not going to mention any names, but it is what it is. Now, am I mad for them saying that? No. I can care less because at the end of the day, I listen to other videos. I mean, I'm sorry, I listen to other artists. I listen to artists that really you know help me go through things whether it's good things or bad things and some of those artists have really saved my life and 
some of these artists have really like pretty much their music is authentic it moves me it has a meaningful message and they're also very creative when it comes to like the production and the skill um, some of them are like lyricists um, they're producers they're singers, singers um, poets and it's rare to have artists that can do everything they can do it all um, I also think that even in today's hip hop it's gotten pretty much talking about the same thing you know over and over and even with today's like rappers now I try to be fair because I understand like not everybody is a lyricist which I get it um, but I do believe the power of the voice in the pen game especially like when you're a lyricist rapper there's so many things to talk about and if you are a rapper and you have that gift just utilize it um, study the greats before you and there have been a lot a couple of really good rappers like the male lyricists and the female lyricists that have really been doing their thing like within a couple of years and I really like how people they do miss the days where like there was a balance in music because when I was growing up right in the early I would say I was born in 92 so I was like listening to music in my generation and also I was listening to the 80s music and the 70s music because those are my favorite genres and the 60s music and black music in particular and then I was listen to, listening to artists from the 90s and then that's when music started really really start to boom during my era because in the early 2000s I was listening to artists that I grew up with right and I even watched like the um, television shows like One Six and Park and TRL and those platforms help artists really promote their music promote their brand and their music promote themselves as artists period fans were able to connect with the music fans were able to like connect with these artists and buy the albums and buy the CDs um, buying CDs back then very popular I mean people were so excited to listen to their favorite artists you know CD their new album that had came out you know and people just buying music they were buying CDs but we already know as time moved on time gradually passed we had you know we had entered into this new age of like digital streaming platforms and downloading um, I think that like I said you know people have the right to purchase music however they choose that's on them it's their choice it's their decision that's fine me I'm an album lover I love buying CDs I love collecting CDs um, my folk they collect CDs they have a huge huge collection of CDs when I was little I used to go in there and just pick out a CD and just listen to the album as long as I put it back as long as long as I didn't mess things up I was good but I was into music so I grew up with the culture and the thing that bothers me today's music it just lacks stu substance and I also think that because of that we got these like artists that for one they're sounding the same and they don't have an original sound now I understand like artists they are like influenced by other artists or inspired by other artists and they take bits and pieces and you know they create their own identity there's nothing wrong with that period because I'm an artist myself but you also as an artist I believe like artists should perfect on their craft they should perfect on their sound they should be able to create a sound that identifies and represents who they are as artists and I don't really hear a lot of that. I just hear the same old, same old, oversaturated, cookie cutter, you know, and it's just, it does not give me any goosebumps or any chills. It just doesn't give me that, like, I can't really know who's who on the radio because everybody sounds the same. Another thing that I think is the issue is some of the artists, today's artists that have the talent but they even struggle putting their music out you know and they even deal with the challenges of getting that mainstream support that mainstream success some of them are underground independent artists some artists were independent and underground before and you know they had the opportunity to sign to a record label 
and then after a while you know it seemed like everything was going well and I talked about this in my previous videos so go check them out but things started you know getting rocky things didn't go up to par so the artists had to move on they had to you know leave their contracts so they had to get out as soon as possible and it's really frustrating especially for artists that have already created a sound for themselves I believe that really it takes a lot of courage it takes a lot of like persistence to believe in your art because regardless of what people may think it's your music you can create any kind of sound you want to create there's no rules in the book you don't have to live by the rules or live by the standards like oh I gotta make this kind of music for this type of success or to gain my audience no you can make music good music stay consistent and be creative and music nowadays has lost its creativity period because the artists that I grew up with they had a lot of creativity there was a lot of variety and mixtures of like people from like the producers um, the singers the songwriters all of the above so people were able to have the ability the time and while they could just be creative you know and don't care about like I said the mainstream acceptance which is why I really get I mean I get agitated in some ways because I am a fan of my my favorite artists because I say this as a fan I'm just a fan you know but I know that it's not walking apart but I also think that it's really sad that the fans that do not understand the fact that you know artists who are in the music business it is a music business but as a fan you gotta do research as well and if you love music just support your favorite artists regardless if your favorite artist goes to a different direction their music um, regardless if you feel like they should only make a certain sound to appeal to the mainstream or regardless if you feel like even they put out a new album they put out a solid body of work if you feel like some songs that you don't like that's cool because I mean I've experienced some songs that I didn't like but still I still supported my favorite artists I didn't care about whatever direction they made in their music all I cared about was just listening to good music that was it and I also think that fans should take the reins because they have the power to support their favorite artists they don't have to wait for mainstream to accept their favorite artists if you've been rocking with an artist for like a period of time you know if you know their sound you just listen to their music and you buy and you support and then when you see how the hard work the sacrifice the blood the sweat the tears from these artists they really put into a lot in their work you know why? You know how I know this? Because I'm an artist myself. Now, I don't do music, but I paint and I draw. I know how it is to put in like hours, countless hours putting in the work, trying to be creative, trying to figure out what to do with my art. How do I set myself apart from my peers? Which is a good thing. Not putting my other peers down because I want them to do well and be successful too. But what do I bring to the table? What do I bring like that I can like say, oh, this is this is my work this is my work this is what I did not to put other people down not to have an ego not to be like really arrogant because unfortunately there's some motherfuckers who are like that and that's a different story because my thing is listen it's not all about you okay boo but the thing is I feel like even in this climate of music when I saw how the change in the ties of music started to progress, I was like, okay, this is a new era too. We're pretty much, you know, seeing new artists break out, new artists, you know, getting the opportunities, and new artists really, you know, creating their own narrative and changing the narrative of like how music's supposed to be, how music's supposed to sound. And I know that people who have, like I said, complained about, we need to hear good music we need to hear authentic music I also think that fans they should demand good music on the radio but I think that the only way that good music can be heard on the radio and this is my opinion I just think that people who support like the underground artists even the mainstream artists that have a whole bunch of talent just keep supporting them 
you know, keep finding their records, keep going, seeing them in concerts. Just show your support because it will speak for itself. Because really, fans, they're the ones who have the power too for an artist to succeed. Not just that artist, but the artists have to do the work as well. But it's like a 50-50. So you have to put in the work. Another thing, what I don't like, that I've been seeing nowadays, um, some of the generation, right, this new generation, they're listening to their current artists, right? And they're listening to like new artists coming into the music business, right? And they keep comparing the new artists to the artists before them. Now, it's nothing wrong with that because artists are going to get compared all the time. That's just cool. That I mean, that's it's like it's all right. But some of these new generation of these fans get cocky and they get arrogant and all they care about is like, well, number 1. All they care about is like sales. All they care about is just popularity. Well, that's cool, but you better be grateful that you can support your favorite artist 20 years from now 30 years from now because even the legends they've been in the game for like over what 25 years even the artists that I've supported through thick and thin perfect example I have supported Mary J Blige I have supported Brandy I've supported Mariah Carey um, Jan Jackson Michael Jackson um, Stevie Wonder Mm. Alia, um, Prince, Missy Elliott, Lil' Kim, Ice Cube, Nas, um, yeah, I mean, and those people pretty much and there's more of them too, but I'm just giving you guys a perfect example of like those artists that started from the ground up, they started from the bottom. They had a passion for music. They had a passion for making music, making their art, and they really, really came from a place of like their experiences, where they went through, and then their fans. Along the way, their fans grew up with them. So their fans witnessed them grow and evolve along the way. And as a fan, I feel like you know, like I said, you know, you don't want to get caught up in their personal life either. But you just, like I said, you love their music. You're going to have to support if you love their music. Um, I also think that even people, it's almost like it gets annoying to the point where when I see, like, even some of the new generation of music, like the new generation of like the current artists, like some of the fans, you know, they get cocky and get into like their feelings like, oh, well, you know, they try to just downplay the hard work, even the sacrifice, because listen, this is nothing but a walk in the park. It's not a walk in the park. But I also think that I feel like things are starting to change. And I can sense change in terms of like people listening to different artists, people listening to a variety of like artists, and really making sure that you keep the genre alive, you keep the tradition alive in terms of like making sure that your favorite artist gets to he or she gets to where he or she needs to be or they needs to be because group is they, he is an artist male, she is a female artist. Like I say, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, it's like you support somebody, you support somebody regardless. I also think that, you know, I don't really hear enough soul in the music. And I got a shout out to like um, my friend, my YouTuber, Tony, because what he said, um, and Tony, you see this video, shout out to you because you always keep it 100. You always make really amazing videos. And I agree with him on the part where it's like, there's not enough soul in the music. I mean, you'll hear it here and there, but it's just not enough, like, rhythm and blues and 
it's just not enough like the instrumentation like switching up the like production um and also even the artists that like have had longevity right they started off making good music but they did follow the trends of like what's you know going on in today's music which is good but they also should balance that putting you know the soul as well so it's like but you got some artists that have has done that and I'm gonna bring her up because I'm a huge Mariah Carey fan and I'm part of Teen Land Billy perfect example Mariah Carey Mariah Carey pretty much her career for over what 20 years Mariah Carey put out her new album Caution last year and as a Mariah Carey fan I was so excited because Mariah, Mariah Carey as an artist as a singer as a songwriter she's one of a kind there will never be another Mariah Carey period and I'm a Mariah Carey fan because I grew up with her music Mariah pretty much is so clever with like maintaining her sound sticking to what she knows being able to connect with her generation and the younger generation this album caution caution is pretty much an album that represents Mariah Carey's longevity her as an artist that she's already established um she pretty much she has a great ear of music she has always had that when she was a little you know when she started singing and even when she started getting to music because she said that was all she knew music then she experienced some things in her life that she put into her music that people can relate and of course mariah carey she became into she became not only an artist a singer and songwriter but just like that entertainer worldwide and it's like Mariah Carey pretty much she basically was able to really study the grades before her and I do hear Mariah Carey's like her vocals and I hear her influences from other artists even when Mariah Carey be singing, because she be singing, like, she takes you there, like, her high notes, her low notes, even the whistle register, she developed her own sound, and she was able to really define her lane in music, and that's why she was, well, she still is known as the Songbird Supreme, because Mariah Carey's vocal was so husky, sultry, and she was able, like, she was really, to be honest, vocally trained. And she was able to, like, execute how her riffs, her runs, and harmonies, and she was very disciplined in her singing. But it took years of practice. And she also had, like, that charisma, that poise. She really, really caught your attention. Like, and I remember listening to Mariah Carey, because the first time I ever listened to Mariah Carey was, like, what? I think my friend she used to babysit me a family member a friend and I've never heard of Mariah Carey period I didn't even know who Mariah Carey was but I was little I think I was about seven but she was like you know have you heard of Mariah I was like nope and then we was listening to Mariah's um the hit singles the hit songs that album and I tell you we were listening to Mariah like 24 7 and I was hooked and I loved how Mariah Carey pretty much you know some people like I said they hate on Mariah and they can talk all this shit about oh well, Mariah is not relevant but Mariah pretty much has really outlasted and her music stands the test of time and it's timeless and even like I even hear people 
the younger generation, they, like some of the young singers, they um, they have even cited Mariah as their inspiration. So it's like with that being said, Mariah had always, to me, and I'm so glad that I, you know, I am a huge fan now because now I understand why Mariah is such a big deal in music because Mariah pretty much had like that she just was so authentic you know and she still is authentic but like I said you know with her new album Caution she pretty much maintained her signature sound she worked with the producers who really appreciated her art and they really embraced like who she is as an artist and you know how she paved the way for music period and artist period and even when when this album caution had came out i was really excited because i said mariah will always bring her a game when she puts out a new album we don't hear mariah like often i mean we do but when it comes to like albums mariah will take her time and she will pretty much like hmm Maybe about a four year gap, three year gap before we hear new music. But Mariah has always been passionate about bringing that soul to music. You know, she have always been like pretty much just bringing like that soul and like that. She just pretty much is like anybody that hate on Mariah Carey is whatever because she still is Mariah Carey. But Team Lambilly, we know what's up because, like I said, we are her supportive fans. But I think that Mariah, pretty much with this new album, she was able to, you know, stay consistent and put hip hop, pop, R and B, and trap together, and put everything gel in one. And then this album is cohesive because it's kind of like. She's really taking you on like a roller coaster. And also the people that she worked with, her vocals, you can hear her vocals and you can hear that she's saying it. There's no auto tune, you know, but she's pretty much, like I said, her voice has gotten older, but she still got a period. Whereas compared with like today's singers, some of them, not all of them, because some of them, they can sing, but some singers today, it's either the auto-tune that's messing up their voice or I don't hear their vocals. I don't hear their, like, I, I just don't hear, like, how they can sing. You know, it's kind of, like, overshadowed by the power, overpowered by, like, the um, auto-tune. And also, they really... They don't really they can't really sing and it's rare when artists have studied and sang and took a lot of like practice a lot of like consistency and even like i said the more you practice and you stay consistent you will get better period i don't care what nobody says and especially as artists nowadays i feel like some of them have gotten lazy and they kind of like it's just some of them, they don't really have the right mentors to like mentor them or like show them in a good way, positive way, like show them how like to sing, show them how to like, okay, this is what you need to do. You need to sing like this. If you got to, okay, because I know everybody is not a powerhouse vocalist. I'm not a powerhouse vocalist, but, and I can't sing anyway but I know this because I've been listening to music and listening to different artists and listening to a variety of like musicians what they need to do the mentors who've been in like the music business for years they can mentor the new up-and-coming artists and say okay well you got this type of voice you got this type of song like you got like what I think a soprano uh the mother kinds of voices I, I can't remember at the top of my motherfucking head but you gotta sing this way 
or know how to execute your vocals know how to sing this way you know don't be afraid to you know you know just sing in a high note sing in the middle note and sing the low note because like I said even though for me I can't sing worth a shit but like another artist I throw out there Brandy the vocal bible because I'm a huge Brandy fan right so I'm part of this team stars Brandy is a vocal beast period Brandy pretty much developed her own sound she developed her own singing because Brandy she sang at the church she you know used to sing at church when she was little so she developed her own sound her own style her own signature and she really honed and she really practiced her vocals she became very confident in her voice and with Brandy that's why she's another one that's a legend and icon because Brandy pretty much is like up there in R&B as well you know, like her hit records and all her albums and all the great things that she's done in her music career. She's been doing it for over 25 years. So, like I said in my last video, you already know what's up. But like Brandy pretty much, she has always had like that moody, husky, dark voice. And this husky and this sultry. And really, the flow how she have always, you know, was singing on her records. Her voice was very distinct. I mean, at the time, it's, it's very distinct to this day. But her voice is distinct. Because her voice kind of... I think, really, in my opinion, I think her voice pretty much stayed the same. Because she's older. She's about 40-something years old. Yeah, she's 40. She's 40-something. But her voice is still the same. And I did get to see her in concert at the Fillmore. That was in 2016. But she still sounded the same lot. And for her to have that stage presence, was able to perform, you know, consistency. Like, she developed her own sound. She developed her own skill set. And she sung exactly live, just like on the vocals. She sounded exactly the same. And really, it's really rare nowadays because, I mean, she's not the only artist. Um, Mariah Carey, I would say Michael Jackson, Jan Jackson, um, Tony Braxton, you know, and Mary J. Blige. You know, it's, it's really, really, like, amazing to hear artists, like, they sound how they sound on an album and then when you hear them live they actually sing they actually can sing or sing exactly how you hear them on an album or on a song on a record on a single whereas today some of today's artists mm, they kind of miss the mark you know and really you know it takes a lot of skill and a lot of determination and look there's always room for improvement I'm not here and I'm not here to do a bashing thing because no, because I already know. Greatness takes time. You just got to work and you have to develop your craft. You have to keep going and then be comfortable and have confidence in what you bring to the table with your music. Um, I also think that, yeah, so Brandy, she's another artist that, you know, she really, really studied the greats and she really like you know she did her thing too you know she has done her thing for a long time also yeah I cannot forget Whitney Houston because Brandy loved Whitney Houston Brandy has always expressed her love and her dedication and keeping her legacy alive and keeping Whitney's legacy alive so she have always been like I gotta do it because Whitney influenced me and she inspired me and that's that um also I think that with today's music right now since it's shifting to a new direction I think that what needs to happen too um artists that aspire to be you know artists and to have like that passion and have that craft and that dedication study the greats you know and don't be afraid to do something different with your music don't be afraid to have a sound that sticks well with what you bring to the table. And whether people like whether people like it or not, just keep going, you know, keep pushing because listen, 
even the greats have said, you know, they have had experiences where people have said, no, they wasn't going to make it. They didn't have the image and all that crap bullshit. But guess what happened, guys? They kept going. They kept moving. They never gave up, period. So that's it. Um, I also like the fact that the ones who really want to take their music seriously, I suggest that they just focus on what they bring to the table and just keep writing, keep being inspired, but keep writing, produce. If they have a gift and doing all of that, keep doing what it do. And please, please, please know who you are as an artist. Know your brand. Don't let nobody dictate to you who you're supposed to be as an artist. Don't let nobody dictate to you what kind of music you're supposed to bring to the table and all that. And it's a little rant and I'm going super saying because I've seen it all before. Artists need to have the freedom to do what the fuck they want with their music. If you don't like it, if you don't like it, if people don't like it, that's fine. But I also find it very funny that some of these music critics and some of these fans, they'll start to flip flop and they also are followers they don't want to, it's almost like their thing is they're so gullible to follow or change their opinion because somebody else has a different opinion. No, if you love an artist, you support them. Also, as artists start to develop their own sound, make sure you believe in your vision. And also, I was about to say, network the right way. Make sure you study the music business because I do research on my own sometimes, you know, just to be educated too because the music business is something else and you have to have, with, you got to have a backbone. You have to stand on two feet because you're going to have mofos. They're going to try to tell you this and that and third, but don't listen to them. You keep doing what you're supposed to do. And like I said, everything will fall in place you just gotta keep believing in yourself and you gotta stay on the ground also make sure when you network make sure you network with the right people in terms of networking you know network anywhere if you guys you know like if artists they plan ahead too to have like a booking a gig you know performances a tour all of that make sure that you got with people that respect you as artists that respect you and have like that ability to have like that um that team and that marketing and management because I've seen it time and time again even with my favorite artists and they had to go through what they had to go through in the music minutes they had to change and switch labels some of them they had developed their own record labels their own independent labels so they they are in control of their own record labels and they can put out the music they want to put out I highly suggest and I highly recommend really at this point I think really you don't need to even you really don't have to be on a record label because at this point it's like this if you especially if you have like that artistic creative direction make your own record label make sure you have the finances make sure you save up just make sure that you're aware of the music business and like I said, be aware of like snaky deals and snakes and all that stuff. But stay true to yourself and don't give up. And only you know what you put in and you put in the work with your art and your music. But that's my rant. That's my little Super Saiyan rant. Because listen, I've seen it all before. I've seen it like artists I've supported for years. I've seen them struggle, but they kept pushing. They kept, you know, they have become resilient. That's the only way. That's the key to success is resilient resilience I've said this in my other videos too so um yeah I think that really good music can you know return it can be back to the forefront again as it was before because it's like really I'm picky on who I listen to I don't listen to a whole bunch of like today's music is the same thing over and over you know and really I only listen to like those who have like that gift and that talent and who actually care about music who actually have a passion for it um and like I said you know I'm gonna keep doing what I do keep buying music save up work hard and you know go to more you know like I said buy more albums go to more concerts 
and do the damn fucking thing. And also, as an artist, I'm going to push myself to, like, really, really get into my artistic being. Because I will show my artwork on this channel so you guys can, you know, know more about me. And I will keep you guys posted and updated with me um, as a person, as a YouTuber. Because I've been doing some really, really good stuff. I've been drawing a lot. I've been painting a lot. So stay tuned for that. I will post videos of my artwork so you guys can see what I've done for a couple of years. So, yeah. But, um, yeah, that's all I got to say. You know, I think, you know... Good music can come back to the front again and it can rain again like it was before. Like it did before. So that's all I got to say. It's a rant. You know, really it's a rant. Well, actually, I can say, mm, yeah, it's a rant. Because I did rant it a little bit. So it's another rant. So yeah, guys, um, let me know down below how you guys feel about this. What are your thoughts? What are your opinions? I know some YouTubers, they have said like how... You know, they like how like they love my channel and they want me to continue to make videos and I support them as well, vice versa. So yeah, we network and connect, so that's a great thing. So yeah guys, um what do you guys think? Um what are your thoughts? What are your opinions? Don't be afraid to like, don't be afraid to share, don't be afraid to subscribe down below, don't be afraid to comment down below. Um don't be afraid to hit that like button, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. And as always you already know this super saiyan is on a roll as always so stay tuned in the next episode of gibson's 92 dragon ball z narrator reference peace bye bye